You know, I was, I was driving this week and I was driving through the area of the Orange Show and I saw them setting up, you know, for this big rave. And, and next Sunday, which is interesting, next Sunday we're coming back. And next Sunday, or the Orange Show on Sunday, they're coming back with a rave. 40,000 probably teenagers, young adults are going to show up take drugs. Um, last year, within a couple hours, they had 12 overdoses within a couple hours right here. In San Bernardino, the, the, the rave that's here is one of the biggest raves anywhere. They're, they're a big one in LA and they have a huge one here in San Bernardino. And when I thought about that, I go, you know, the devil's working overtime on the internet. People are depressed. Marriages are falling apart. Um, yesterday we had, we had a young man from one of our members of a church got in a fight, got stabbed to death. We had another member three weeks ago, his son, he's an usher in our church. Um, they got in some altercation on the freeway. Um, it was road rage on both sides. He went up to the car and the guy shot him in the face and killed him. You know, so we're running into a lot of, lot of turmoil of what the enemy is doing and we knew that this was our time we've been doing fire Fridays every single Friday why are we been doing fire Fridays to prepare us for the warfare that we're ready to enter in to win souls for Jesus Christ for eternity there is no other group of people on earth that are here to fight against Satan to fight against depression fight against all the violence fight against the hate it's the church and if we're closed down and we're not opened up, we're just allowing saying one more day without any resistance. We're gonna, we're gonna establish God's presence in our homes, but we're also gonna come back together as a church and get encouraged and get strengthened so we could be stronger in our everyday life. We're, remember, it's gonna be a one-two punch. <clears throat> we'll never ever be a, a church that just meets on Sundays and then we just live our everyday lives. We want to meet on Sundays and experience the presence of God, get filled with hope, get filled with God's power. And then all week long, this is what we want to do. First, we want to go ahead and give it to our family in our homes, that God's presence will flow from here into our homes and then overflow into our communities. How many believe that we can do that together? Here, home, our communities. God wants us to overflow with his presence, with his power and his love. And this has been a really good season while we've been off and not being in here. We've continued to be the church. Uh, there's a lot of great things that are happening. We're right now finishing up on our, our food distribution center. We're going to be able to give out more food than ever. We're going to have walk-in freezers so we could have meat, the best food we've ever been able to give out. And right now, if you've dr driven down Kendall, you'll see the most beautiful building on whole Kendall is our food distribution warehouse, which used to be a firehouse. Now it's gonna be used for God. It's gonna be a lighthouse. That's what it's gonna be, where the present people can come and get food and, and we're gonna, it's just gonna be a warehouse. We're gonna be able to store food. So a lot of great things are happening and we're getting ready to do the greatest outreaches we've ever done in hurting areas and communities. We're getting ready to launch churches in Pomona. We're even looking right now in Watts and Compton to launch churches, Chicago, right? We're, we're getting ready to take over the world in Jesus' name. In the areas that are dar the darkest. So, so we've been we've, we're coming back together as a church and come in faith, ready to receive what God has for you. And there's nothing like coming together together as a group of believers. We experience the presence of God in a way that we don't experience him personally in our homes or, or maybe with even with your family. That You'll experience the presence of God there as well. But there's nothing like when we all come together and we worship God as a family or as a church. It's a whole nother level of experience. Are you excited? Come on, leaders that are here, are you excited about what God's doing at home? Are you ready for next week? So last week we started a series, Unleashing God's Power Through the Church. Say it with me. Unleashing God's Power 
through the church. And last week we covered this, that the church is the body of Christ. And what that means, if God's going to do anything on this earth, he thinks it, he gives vision, but the hands and feet of Jesus are every single believer. We are the body of Jesus. Anytime God wants to encourage someone, he uses a physical mouth. He uses his body to encourage them. If God wants to heal someone and touch them or hug them, he uses his body to touch them and hug them. So if God wants to set somebody free from demonic oppression, he uses his body, his church, to set them free. So Jesus is the head and we're the body. So God unleashes his power on this earth through his body. And the enemy doesn't want us to be connected to the body of Christ. Because the body of Christ we covered last week is more than an organization, it's an organism. And when you're disconnected from the organism, you die. So this is what the enemy's after, getting us disconnected from the body so we're ineffective. But when we're connected, there's nothing that we can't do together. And this is why as a church, we'll get more done as a church than we will as individuals. We were created to work together as a body. Last week we covered also, don't discount your part in the body. The foot should never say, I'm not important because I'm not a hand. And we covered that last week that it's so easy for us to put ourselves down and think that we're not valuable or we're not good enough because we compare ourselves to other people. You're not here to compare yourself to anybody because no one can replace you. You might not be a hand, but you're a foot. And you might not be a foot, but you're a hand. You might not be an eye, but you're an ear. And we need all of it to work together. We need you to do the full work of God. So don't discount yourself. Say with me, I am part of the body. Say this with me too. I belong. It's so good to know that. Because what God does, the Bible says, that he places each member right where he wants it. And God has placed us here at a local church, the Way Rural Outreach, right where he wants us. And we're going to do our part. And you do have a part. But today, what I want to talk to you about, last week we, co we covered, the church is the body of Jesus Christ. Today, God's unleashing his power through the church. This is a statement. The church is an army. Say it with me. The church is an army. I'm going to give you three quick facts about God's army. And then we're going to talk about God's army the church was built for. What was this army built for? So let's go over three quick facts about God's army. Number one, one of the names of God is the Lord of heaven's armies. Now, the scripture says here in Psalms 22.10, I mean 24.10, it says, Who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He is the king of of glory. So one of the names of the Lord is the Lord of heaven's armies. Now when I think about it, it doesn't say the Lord of heaven's army. It, there's armies. And what he was saying here is when I look at the armies, what, are, what, are the, what does this armies consist of? It consists of angels. Angels are part of this, are, are part of these armies and it consists of believers. Believers are part of these armies. We are the armies or the army on earth. And there's, there's armies in the spiritual realm and those are angels. And then there's demonic armies which are also in the spiritual realms that we're fighting against. Now either you're part of the army of God, fighting for the will of God, the kingdom of God, the vision of God, or you're part of another army, the army of Satan. And that's why Jesus said this, either you're for me or you're against me. Either you're fighting for my cause or you're fighting against my cause. But the truth is we're fighting. So God as believers, we're part of 
God's army. So quick fact number one, we, one of the names of God is the Lord of heaven's what? Armies. I remember one day I was helping someone get set free from demonic oppression. Now, why do Christ, what, why does Jesus say that these signs will follow those that believe? And one of the first things he says, you will cast out demons. That there would be, you would be in a war that you would, you would remove demons from families. You remove demons from purse people. You remove demons from cities. You'll have the power to resist and remove. That's powerful. That power you as a believer have because you're part of God's army. But I remember one day I was helping someone get set free from strong demonic oppression. It was so strong that the demons were literally took over the person's mouth, actions, gestures. And I remember while I was casting the demon out because God uses his body and his army to cast demons out. I say, pastor, how do you cast demons out? This is all I said. I don't do no rituals or anything. I don't bring out some special oils and some smoke, right? That'd probably be witchcraft doing that kind of stuff. But this is what I do. It says you'll cast them out. You know how we cast them out? With our mouth and faith. So all I would say is this, I command you in the name of Jesus, go. And I have the authority and you have the authority to command demonic spirits to go. There's some things that you're dealing with that are more than your emotions. They're more than a diagnosis from the doctor. They're actually demonic. And you've been trying to alleviate it through maybe a pill or some counseling, but maybe you need to use some authority and start saying in the name of Jesus, I command this spirit of anger, this spirit of depression, this spirit of rejection, I command you, the spirit of suicide that's over my family, I command you in the name of Jesus, go. And you'll never be strong in the Lord until you start exercising and knowing, first of all, that you're in a battle. Someone say, I'm in a battle. How can you win a battle that you don't even know you're in? We don't talk enough about the warfare we're in and we're being defeated for our lack of knowledge or our lack of engagement. Someone say, use your authority. But I remember casting that demon out. And all of a sudden, something switched in that person's face. And they were terrified. And I seen the fear, and it wasn't the person's fear, it was a demon that was fearing. So I just saw the switch. One second, the demon was arrogant. I'm not going anywhere. The next second, ah! Like, I didn't know what switch in the atmosphere. So I asked the demon, and he was trying to run, he was scared. I go, what do you see? Because I couldn't see it. And this is what the demon said, angels. I go, what are they here to do? And this is what the demon said, they're here to take me to the pit. So then I started interrogating this demon. Because I want to know what's going on. I go, how many do you see? And this is what the demon said, thousands. What God showed me in that moment, that whatever battle I'm in, I got more than enough power to face the devils that are coming against me. And God is making his army aware you're in a winning battle and I empowered you with my army. You're not only part of the army, you got armies backing you up. I don't know how long, I'm, how far I'm gonna get through this because I'm not gonna rush through this. 
because we need to get this in our spirit. We need to understand that we are in warfare. And some of the things that you're fighting against right now, you're looking for a quick fix by someone coming and fixing you. And God says, I'll fix you. But there's some things that you're just losing in because you just don't know. You're not engaging in the battle. You're trying to fix your son and your daughter in the wrong realm. You're trying to fix your husband in the wrong realm. You're physically fighting, you're arguing, you're throwing stuff. And God says, as long as you keep doing that, you're not in the realm to get your victory. Your realm for your victory is in the spirit. Come on, give God some praise. We got some, come on, we got some victory. Stop fighting against people and start fighting against the devils that are coming against our city, coming against our nation, coming against, come on, our kids. We are in an army. I remember back in the day, we used to sing songs about we're part of God's army. It's like we've lost our identity somewhere. We're going to get it back in Jesus' name because God is going to flow his power through his church, the army. Quick fact number two, and I don't even know how quick facts, these, quick, these facts aren't that quick. Number two, Jesus never goes to war without his armies. Now, when Jesus comes back, he's coming back. I want you to get he's not coming back to die on the cross. He already did that. He's not coming back to get beat down for our sins. He already did that. He's not even coming back to wash anybody's feet. He already did that and we're doing that. But he's coming back to wage war against the devil all his hordes and anyone that's an enemy of God. When he comes back, we're going to have the battle of Armageddon. But when he comes back after the tribulation, the second coming of Jesus Christ, he's not coming alone because he never wages war alone. He always wages war by choice with his army. Just think about that. He's chosen. He don't need his army because he's all powerful by himself. But he allows his army to participate. We do the possible. He does the impossible. Look at this scripture when Jesus comes back. He ain't coming back. He's not coming back weak. He's coming back strong. Revelations 19, 14. Look at this. The armies of heavens dressed in the finest of pure white linen followed him on white horses. Who are these armies dressed in finest of pure white linen following him on white horses? These are all the believers that have been raptured and died. They're not dead. They're getting ready for battle. And I could just imagine they're in heaven and then God, Jesus says, the father says, it's time to come back. But we're coming back to wage war. Every devil that hurts you, every devil that destroyed your family, every devil that made you suffer, right now we're coming back to destroy every work of the devil. I started it 2,000 years ago and we're going to finish it now. Come on, come on believers, get on your horses. So they're going to be riding on the, our part is to ride on a white horse. I can't wait for that day. I just can't wait for the energy of that day that Jesus is leading the battle on his white horse and I'm on a white horse. I'm going to be, come on, get. I'll be like, we're trying to get in the front. Come on. Come on, anybody going to be like that? Like me, whipping that horse. I want to be in the front line. I want to see it all. And imagine being in a war that you can't lose, that Jesus, that Jesus is leading. Imagine being in that kind of war that you can't lose and Jesus is leading. Well, let me let you know something. You're in that war right now. Jesus is leading and you got the victory. It's just a physical picture that we're seeing of the spiritual place you are already in. I love it. So he goes to war, but he doesn't go to war without his armies. See, even when Jesus was here on earth, 
he had access to his armies. Jesus was not overpowered by the enemy. He willfully gave his life for us. You got to get this. It wasn't that the Romans overpowered him. And we know they didn't because the day that they came to arrest him with the religious leaders of the day, Peter takes out his sword. He ain't playing. Peter was a gangster. He was the one telling Jesus, don't you worry about it. I got your back, G. He probably said, J, G, I got you. And Jesus would probably just shake his head like, you still don't get it. You think you got to protect me? I protect you, homie. You going to protect me now. So the scripture says that they came to arrest him and Peter did pull out his, he, he pulled out his sword and cut the guy's ear off. And Jesus now responds to him, and this, this is the response. In Matthew 26, 53, he says, Do you think I cannot appeal to my father and he will at, he will at once send more than 12 legions of angels? This is the guy's ears on the ground. And now he's having a conversation. This guy's screaming, ah! And Jesus is so cool. He just stops and starts teaching about the power that's available to him by just calling on the Father. When I go to war, my angels are backing me up. My army is backing me up. And I got an army on earth of believers that are backing up everything I say, they're carrying it out. They're walking in my spirit. They're walking in my power. They're walking in my authority. They go where I tell them to go. They say what I tell them to say. They're my soldiers. Satan can't have his way on this earth because the army of God's still here. That's why the Antichrist can't take over till the church is raptured. Because just one believer can call on the armies of heaven to take them out. Because if the Antichrist is ruling and I'm here or you're here or the way we're allowed is here, we just start picketing. We just start protesting Antichrist in the name of Jesus. And we just start using our authority and we just start claiming scripture that we're the head and we're not the tail. You're underneath our feet. Jesus has given us all authority to trample on scorpions and serpents and demons. So in the name of Jesus, I command, I bind you. And whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. I bind you. So in order for Satan to rule during the seven year tribulation, the church must be raptured. Because one believer has access to the whole armies of heaven. It's gotta take us out. But then we're gonna come back. And when we come back, he's done. And I just pray when Jesus comes back the second time or he comes back in the rapture, I pray that you're on the winning side. And I would even have to question us right now, what army are you part of? Because if you're pushing sin and his agenda, hate, violence, division, anger, lust, you're pushing Satan's, Satan's mission. You're fighting against God's purpose. For this purpose, the Son of God came to destroy the works of the devil. And the scripture goes on to say, he who practices sin is of the devil or he's for the devil. And this is what we're saying. We don't practice sin. We practice following Jesus. We've already decided which side we're on and we're all, come on, we're all in on this side. We've made up our minds. We will serve the Lord. Me, my house, this city will be won over for Jesus Christ. I declare it in the name of Jesus. Are there any believers in the home, any believers here that realize we're part of the army of God? We're in a fight and we're going to win. So Jesus said, 
that he could have called on the father and the father would have sent him 12 legions. A legion is 3,000 to 6,000 soldiers. So he could have called for 36,000 angels up to 72,000 angels with which just one call. So how powerful is that? Two angels destroyed the whole city of Sodom and Gomorrah. 72,000 angels would have just came in a call like, Father, yes. Am I, this is the truth. The angels were already there ready to be dis dispatched. And then Jesus says, no, I'm choosing to die for their sins. Don't rescue me because I'm rescuing them. I'm actually in war right now and this is going to be the greatest act of war I've ever done with this dying on the cross and resurrecting from the dead. I'm going to overcome every destructive plan of the enemy. I'm going to set them free. I'm going to pay the price for their sins. I'm going to fill them with my spirit. I will once again live in them and they'll be part of my army. So stop. Is that powerful? Jesus never goes to war without his army. So God, right now, and I'll tell you church, this is why we're coming back as an army together in the house of God. I as a pastor, I'm being led by the spirit of God when we were supposed to open. There were churches that had been open. People would come up to you, pastor, there's a lot of churches still open. I go, I understand. But we're not being driven by what other people are doing. We got to hear what God's saying to us personally. Because you understand, doing the right thing at the wrong time is not the right thing anymore. Because God's not backing it up. You do the right thing at the right time, it's the right thing. And you get the favor of God, the power of God, the protection of God. Everything follows that. But pastor, you know, there's people who probably go to those churches and... I'm not going to be, I want you to get this. I'm not a politician. I am a, I am a, I just I'm a messenger of God. And my responsibility is to give the message of God. And if you're, you're part of this congregation, I don't care where you go. You ain't going to be at home. You're going to have to come right, right back here. This is going, because uh, I didn't feel right. I know you, you're supposed to be over there. What are you doing over there? But we know this, is we're going to walk under the power of God, the authority of God. The Bible says this, submit to God, resist the devil, and he'll flee. You cannot, resist a de you cannot resist a devil if you're not submitted to God properly. And God gives specific instructions, and we move with specific instructions. So we didn't open up this church until it was time. And then how we were going to open it up was another idea that God had to give me. How we're going to open it up? He goes, start on fri Fridays. Do something you've never done because I want to fill my people with my presence, with my power, exposing the prophets, exposing to apostles, exposing to my word, exposing to my spirit, exposing to the Holy Spirit, exposing the baptism of the Holy Spirit, expose them to all of it because they're going to need all of it with the fight that they're going to. But this fight that I'm preparing them for, come on, this fight I'm preparing them for is already won. All they got to do is come on their white horse and willing to ride with me. Come on, is there anybody willing to ride with Jesus? So now we're riding together and we're coming back to the house of God with power and authority. God's not coming back for a church that's moaning, crying, victims. We're not victims, we're part of an army. Come on, a part of an army that brings the power of God. We're the hope for this dying world, the church. Well, all I could cover today is the three quick facts. So next week, we'll do part two when the church is here. And next week, we're going to talk about what the, the army of God is built for. Ooh, it's built. I'm going to show you, I'm going to tell you what it's built for. Do you know the church was built? You know who built the church? Jesus. It wasn't a man-made idea. It was God that built this thing. Okay, so last quick fact about God's army. The armies of God outnumber the armies of Satan. 
there's always more for us than are coming against us. No matter how bad it looks, we are never outnumbered. We are fighting from a position of power, numbers, and victory. I love that. No matter what battle you're in, there's always more for you than are against you. But pastor, it looks like there's way more against us because you're looking at people. See, that's the problem. You can never win a, a spiritual battle looking at the physical realm. The physical realm will start telling you that you're defeated, that there's no hope, that the numbers don't match, that you don't have enough money. How could that ever happen? You don't have enough ability. You don't have enough talent. Look at your life. Look at all the mistakes you've done. How do you think God's going to ever use you? You're you powerful? You're not powerful at all. He'll, you'll never win a victory focusing on the physical realm. You'll only win a spiritual victory when you focus on the spiritual realm. And the spiritual realm is more powerful than any physical fact in your life. I know, I know what they said and I know how you grew up and I know what the doctor said and I know all your failures. I get that. But God's bigger than your generational curses. God's bigger than your background. God's bigger than the abuse you went through. God's bigger for the, than the sexual abuse you went through. God is bigger than your failures. God is bigger than your mess up. God is bigger than your bank account. God is bigger than anything that you're facing, your marriage problem. We serve a God in the spirit is bigger than anything you're facing in the physical. The spiritual created the physical. Come on, our God just said a word and it was. We are not outnumbered. And when you start thinking this way, you're gonna start walking in some confidence. You'll have no problem going to Watts and Carson. I went to neighborhoods. We went to the Imperial Courts, Jordan Downs, all these, all these, these, these projects that are known nationwide for crime, poverty, violence. They have areas in, in, in imperial courts, that they, they call them red zones. You stand there, you got a really good shot, chance to get shot. You don't stand there. But God says, stand there. I don't want you to stand in the quiet zone. I want you to bum rush the red zone. And I want you to be right there worshiping me, proclaiming my word, and tearing down the struggles of the enemy because there's more for you than are against you. Come on, are there any bold believers here in the house of God that are allowing God to unleash his power through his army? I'm part of the army of God. If anybody's going to get saved, if anybody's going to get set free, if anybody's going to go to heaven, if anybody's going to be snatched out of hell, it's because of God's army on the earth. And this is the last verse. Second Kings 6, 16 and 17. Now, this is, a, this is an actual battle here. There's a whole army chasing after one man and his servant. They're not out to arrest him. They're out to kill him. And it's interesting. It's just one man, his name's Elisha. And they want to kill him because they want to shut his mouth because his mouth is so powerful. And all Elisha does, what makes his mouth so powerful, he only says what God tells him to say. And then when God tells him to say it, his power backs up everything he said. So this king it said, we got an enemy and it's Elisha's mouth. And if we could kill him, we'd win because we shut his mouth. We're not afraid of armies that are surrounding us 
we're really afraid of this one man that's speaking with such power that when he tells the rain to stop or the clouds to stop giving rain, they stop giving rain. If he tells the king, you're going to go to war, but you're going to lose, we lose. We got to shut this guy up. Because there's so much power in his words. But they don't realize that they're not fighting against Elisha. They're fighting against the armies of the living God. Elisha knows his backup. Do you remember David facing Goliath? And what did Goliath say? Goliath was int intimidating him, saying that he's going to kill him, destroy him, annihilate him. And then David said this, you come to me with sword, javelins, intimidation, fear, but I come to you in the name of the armies of the living God. So let's throw down. A matter of fact, today I'm going to cut your head off with your own sword and then I'm going to hold it up. That's how it's going to go down. So if you're ready to throw down with me and my whole army, let's do it. Come on, church. We need to get back to knowing that we have some backup in the spirit. I'll say this, God is bigger than coronavirus. <laughs> Come on, give God some prayer. Whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. A lot of germs, Pastor. You're talking about a lot. There's still more angels than germs. Amen. Come on. And you know what's interesting about the word corona in Spanish? It means crown, crown or king or authority. So it's a crown or king demonic plague. But we serve the king of kings and the Lord of lords and the Lord of armies. And if he's for us, who or what can come against us? I will not die one day before my time. You can't take me out because I serve the king, the creator of the whole universe, and he has my life in his hands. I will not let fear stop me from carrying out the assignment of God. Come someone, give God a, just a little bit of a praise if you believe it. We're going to end it with this. I've been telling you, these are, these are three quick points that are not so quick. <laughs> but this is what, so now there's an army. Elisha, his servant that doesn't have this awareness of his backup. This Christian that doesn't know who he serves is fearful. All he could see is the devastation, the sickness, the defeat. He could not see victory because he's focused and speaking about the wrong realm. So Elisha, that knows that he's part of the armies of the living God, he knows he has backup, says this. Do not be afraid. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elijah prayed and said in verse 17, Oh Lord, please open his eyes that he may see. So the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. Just like, I want you to get this. The, art, the army was surrounded by a bigger army. The army was surrounded by a spiritual army. And the scripture says that that army blinded that whole army. 
and now Elisha just leading them out of town. They couldn't see. You know what God does? He turns the tables. And what God is ready to do right now in this nation, come on, the tables need to be turned. And it's not going to be a government that's going to turn the table. Come on, it's not going to be a, a movement that's going to change, uh, turn the tables over. It's going to be the same Jesus that turned those tables over. It's the same Jesus right now that's ready to go to war in the name of Jesus. And he's ready to turn families upside down. He's ready to turn cities upside down. He's ready to turn your life upside down or right side up. Give God some praise that we're part of this army of the living God. One more praise to the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Let's all stand up. I love being back in the house of God. Aren't you excited to be back? How many heard from God? Okay. That must, that must mean God is here. I would hate to come back to a service with no fire. That would make me question like, what? Or a patty cake message. God didn't give us no patty cake message. He gave us a war message. That sounds like our God. Come on. That sounds, let's go to war. Stop being a victim. We're not victims. We're part of Armour's living God. We are our identity. We have an identity. Let's fight. Don't let sin overtake your purpose. You know, the devil, all he has is this. Thoughts and temptation. That's his weapons. <laughs> it's like the, the pervert. He has candy and a little puppy. <laughs> if you can resist the candy and a puppy, you'll be fine. I know, that's a bad example. I'm just saying. I, I, I just come with some crazy stuff. I mean, God uses this crazy mic. Okay. I'm, so, I'm sure God's saying, you could have thought of a better one. I know, I know. I was just trying my best. <laughs> okay. But you guys understand that. Don't exchange your position, your victory, your family, your prosperity for some candies and a puppy. Some of you, that's all you're going to remember. But that, that word that he gave at the end, that was past deep. I just love candies and puppies. Right? And I don't know what your candy is or what your puppy is. <laughs> Let's keep going with that one. <laughs> but when it comes, it's only a trap. And it might be a thought that you're comfortable with that you need to start resisting and submit it to the truth of God's word. The devil comes easily and tells you you're not worthy and you just go along with it. I'm not worthy. You start repeating everything he's telling you instead of repeating what God says. You're not alone. I love you. I'm for you. And I'm for you. Who is going to be against you? Stop speaking and agreeing with the devil and start agreeing with God's word. And I know it might be a little hard right now because you've been so used to agreeing with the devil that it's messed with your emotions, it's messed with your purpose, it's messed with your perspective. You feel like, man, can I over overcome this? and you're looking in the wrong realm. He goes, I'm the one that called you and I don't call any junk and I don't make any mistakes. I know exactly what I'm doing, but past, but Lord, you know what, but, you, but, 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 and he goes, stop butting me out of this whole situation. I'm the one that's gonna make you, I'm the one, come on, I'm the one that's gonna, I'm the one that called you, I'm the miracle worker. Your job is just to get on that horse and start riding. I'm, your, your, your linens are pure only because I've cleansed them with my blood. You don't take any credit for this. So stop trying to do what I do and just be willing to let me define your life and let me speak over you. Start repeating what I'm saying. You're destroying yourself. Stop it. That's what God is saying. We're part of a body. We belong. You're part of an army and you got a lot of power backing you up. Are you guys ready to surrender everything to the Lord? Come on, church, next week. Well, leaders, leaders, right after this, we're meeting... We're, we're going to have a 15-minute break. Then we're going to come back in. I'm going to do a leadership. We're going to do a leadership meeting. We're getting ready to, for the biggest move of God we've ever seen in the history of the world. I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking. When God starts bringing out messages like this, this is next level warfare. And he's getting us ready. Come on. Are you guys ready? Come on. Are you guys ready, church? Pastor Robert, can you close us out, please? Wow. What a great word. How many received that word today? You're at home right now. What a great word. Let's bow our head and let's close our eyes today. You're at home right now. Maybe you're in this auditorium here. 
and you haven't received Jesus as your Savior, like Pastor Marco said earlier, what army are you on? With every head bowed, every eyes closed, and you're at your home right now, maybe you're at your workplace, maybe you're driving a truck, I don't know where you're at, but God's been speaking to you this whole time right now, and you're saying, I want to receive Jesus, I want to be part of that army. With every head bowed, every eyes closed, this is you right now, you're at home, you have a son, you have a teenager there, you have a husband, you have a wife there, just take a moment, take 30 seconds, say, honey, this is one of the reasons why we're watching this service today. I want you to give your life to Christ. You're at a home right now. You're in a living room. You got your teenager there, maybe a teenager's friend. A teenager's friend is there. Take a moment to get ready. Get ready to say this prayer with the pastor right now. Yeah, there it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I see a teenager getting saved right now. They're going to get saved in the living room right now. I just seen a living room. I seen a teenage girl there. She has her friend there. She has her friend right there in the living room. Go, go, get ready. You're going to say this prayer with us right now. Get ready. Your life will never be the same ever again. And you're going to get saved, teenager. You're going to get other teenagers saved. You're going to get other family members saved. God's going to use you to reach, your, to reach your family. Yes, there it goes. Get ready. Every head, bow, your eyes closed. You want to receive Jesus as your Savior. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness. I repent of all my sins Jesus come into my heart become my Lord and Savior from this day forward I am a follower of Jesus I am a Christian Holy Spirit fill me thank you God for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for me I am saved I am born again I'm on my way to heaven and I am part of the greatest army in the world. Thank you, Jesus, for choosing me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you just said that prayer here or online at your home, you are saved. Make sure if you're at home right now, go to igotsaved.com.